welcome to another construct video and in this video we're going to tackle grappling hooks now grappling hooks have been a big part of gaming recently being an apex legend the new halo has been around in other games such as overwatch as well grappling hooks are something that's really really difficult to implement and there's lots of different ways to implement them i'm going to show you one way today that you can implement a grappling hook into your game so let's get started first thing we need to do is we need to create some objects so let's start by creating our grappling hook first I'm just going to call this grapple and just create our object and I'm just going to just take a grey colour and fill it in it's really important that we resize it so width 20 height of 10 and press OK and this will give you a little rectangle like so now what's really important is we take our origin point we move it to the left side like so and this is going to be how it's going to attach to our player and then we also need another side so add image points and this could be on the right side and this is what's going to connect to our block once you've done with that just hit the x and just move your grappling hook just off the screen out the way then we need to create what's called an image points so i'm going to call this connection points and we can resize this just to five by five I'm just going to fill it in red. What this is going to do is going to allow us to check if we've made a valid spot for our grappling hook. Now we actually need two connection points so we can clone this one. Have connection point two. And I'm just going to change the colour of this one to green just so I can see them when I'm clicking on them. Now when we play the game these will become invisible so we don't need to worry about them standing out or being in the way but they are needed in our code. We also need to add a block to grapple to. So I'm just going to call this block. Click anywhere. And again, I'm just going to take a quick color, go for a gray, and place it in. I'm going to place a couple of sort of blocks around for me to grapple to. So one to get to the higher ledge, one to get over this gap, and one to get to the end endpoint. Now, some of you might be thinking, but I want to grapple anywhere in the level. I'll show you how you can do a fix for that later so you can grapple without using these fixed block positions. Final thing that we need, so we need to insert a new object. We're going to add our mouse. We need to be able to click where we want our grapple to be placed. So we can add our mouse like so. With that done, we're now ready to move to our event sheet. First thing we need is we need a global variable. This can be called connection made. And this is going to check if we've made a successful connection or not. It's just going to be a Boolean and it's going to be at false because at the start of the game we've not made a successful connection. I'm going to add an event and I'm going to say mouse on clicks, left mouse click, done. And before we do anything, we need to just make sure that there's nothing on the screen already. So we're just going to destroy a load of our objects. So we're going to destroy any connection points that are down. So that's connection point one and two. And this acts almost as a bit of a reset. And we also want to destroy any grappling hooks that are already active. Once we've got those destroyed, we're going to add a new action. I'm going to do system, create object. I'm going to create our first connection point. And this is going to be set to mouse.x and mouse.y. Like so. Just press done. Now once we've placed our first connection point, we need to check if it's a valid point. So we're going to add a new event. And what we're going to do is we're going to check if that connection point is overlapping our block. Now the other thing we want to do is we want to go back to our layout, go to our player, just get a behavior to our player, and the behavior is going to be called line of sight. Now we can adjust the line of sight value currently set to 10,000, which means it can cover the whole screen. You might want to say that it can only grapple into a range of 1,000, so that's the distance it can grapple to. So it's a really, really great thing to add. And all we're going to do is check that our player, so add another condition, has line of sight of our connection point. And now if both these conditions are met, if you've clicked on somewhere that's got a block and the player has line of sight to that block, we can start grappling and the way we do this is start by going settings and then set boolean connection made true and then we're going to take our connection point i'm going to spawn in our second connection point 
And this is the main one that we're going to use to grapple between. Now we also need to check if you've not made a successful connection. So we're going to add an else statement. And then all we're going to do is do system, set boolean, connection made, false. So you've not made that connection. Now this done up and set up, we've now got to the stage where we can check if the player has clicked in a valid location. Now we can start doing our grappling. Before we continue, we just need to add a behavior to our grappling hook. So we're just going to right click on our grappling hook, edit behaviors, and add one called tween. Now tween is really important as it allows us to animate between different properties. I'm going to use this to get the right width or height of the grappling hook. So let's add our first event. And all we're going to do is check if Boolean is set, connection made, so if that's true. And we also want to make sure this is only happening once. So to do that, we just go to our system and we just go trigger once while true. Once both of those are done, we can set up a couple of things. So the first thing we can do player, spawn another object, and grapple. Next, what we want to do is do player move to top. This just means our grappling hooks can be hidden behind our player, which is really, really helpful. For the grappling hooks on top, it looks a bit strange. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do player, start ignoring input, and true. Now, in most games, you can use the grappling hook while moving. Now, the reason I'm setting this up is because actually it's really, really difficult to create a grappling hook that allows the player to also move with it. So if you do want to see a more advanced tutorial, it'll be a lot more advanced where we can have a moving grappling hook, please let me know. But I want to keep this tutorial fairly simple because there are still a lot of elements just to get a simple grappling hook to work. I don't want this video to be too long today. So we're going to start ignoring inputs, stop the player from moving. That way we don't get any weird stuff happening. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the angle of the grappling hook. So grappling hook, set angle towards position. And this is going to be between connection point two's x position and connection two's y position, like so. And hit done. And then finally, we can make use of our tween function that we added. So we're going to scroll down. Tween one property. Now, for the tag, I like to just set us up as one because there's two tween tags that we're going to need. So I'm just going to call the first one one, but you can call it whatever you like. And then we're going to set the width of the grappling hook and the end value actually is going to be the distance between our player and the connection. Now, there's some complex maths behind this, but luckily Constructs has got a function to prevent a bit of maths, and that's the distance function. So this takes in the first position's x coordinate, so player.x, the first position's y's coordinates, player.y, and then the end points x and y, so connection 2.x connection to dot y. We'll comma between all of them. The time is how long it takes to do that action. And we want that to be 0 0.5. And then just hit done. So what we want to do is check grapple hook. On finished. We want to check if one has finished. So once all of this is finished, this tween property is finished, and it's made that connection, well, we actually want to take our first connection point, and now we can destroy it, because we don't need it anymore. So we want that destroyed. Set our connection made. So we're going to set the boolean. Connection made, now false. So now we're able to cast a new grappling hook. And now we're going to set the grappling hook's position again. We're going to set it to connection point 2x and connection point 2.y. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to take the same angle, the same height of it, but it's just going to move it upwards to where the connection point 2 is. What we're going to do is we're going to do something quite clever here. We're going to take the grappling hook and we're going to set angle. And this is going to take the current position of the grappling hook that we set up. So current angle, we're going to add 180 to it. Now, if we run this and test it, it looks like it's done nothing. But actually, the 
origin point is now on the block, not on the player. And we can use this to actually make the same thing that we did with the tween, where we've got the grapple hook going towards the block, but actually now it goes from the player to the block the other way around. Final thing we need for this one is we're going to go to grapple. We'll go down to tween one property. And we're going to start at tag equals two. Property is going to be width again. And the end value this time is going to be zero. Time taken is going to be 0.5. And then we're just going to hit done. Now what we've got is if we run this, we click and the grappling hook goes back to the end of the block. Final thing we need to do is actually get the player to launch with the grappling hook. So this one's quite easy to set up. All we're going to do is add a new event onto our grappling hook. And using the tween properties, we've got one called is playing. So we can check if tag number two is playing. Tag number two is the one that we've just set up. And if so, we want to do player set position and set it to our grapple but we don't want grapple.x instead what we're going to use is we're going to use image point x and then one this is actually setting the player's position to that image point that we set up inside our grappling hook earlier on we can do the same for y so image point y so it's not going to the origin point it's going to the image point one we set up What we need to do is add a new event. We can do grapple on finished. We want to check that two is finished. We can do player set ignore input and stop ignoring. So let's test that first of all before we carry on any further. So now I can click, fly towards it, and then we have to move again. I'm still getting launched downwards. And this is because all that gravity is adding up and then it's pushing the player down at the end. So we've got a couple of sort of issues that we need to work on there. So we're going to actually take the grappling hook first and destroy it. So the grappling hook's done its job. We want to make sure it's out of the way, even though it's technically invisible because the width is zero. And what we're going to do is do player set vector y to minus 300. This means instead of pushing us down, it's actually going to apply a 300 vector going up, so we fly off the end of our grappling hook. What we can also do is, just before we do our tween, we can set up a global variable. We can call this players old x. We can set it to a number. And then once we've started our tween, we're going to take the players x position, so system, set value of players old x and this is going to be player dot x and we're just going to make sure this happens before the screen and the reason we're storing this is because we want to check what side of the connection point the player is on now at the end of the grapple hook if we check the player's position then it's on top of the connection point so we can't check it we need to actually store this value beforehand then what we can do is we can add sub-event, compare variable, players old x is greater than players current x, and we can do player dot set vector x to minus 300, copy and paste this, and we're going to do less than and we'll set this to positive 300. This just means that we get pushed in the x direction one way or the other. We also need to make sure we get the full effect of the vector. We're just going to do player set the acceleration to zero. And this just means that nothing is stopping us flying through the air. And we just need to make sure that happens before our vector y. And our final bit of code that we need today is player. is on floor then we can set our deacceleration back to what it was before now by default this is 1300 
But if you've changed yours or want to check how to find these values out, then you can just click and you'll see there actually it's 1420. I'll put this to 1300 so it's the same. Now, I mentioned earlier about making sure that the player can't move as they're doing these actions. This actually goes for falling as well. If they fall and do the grappling hook, then the animation of the grappling hook is not going to look right. So to make sure the player can't do that, we're just going to add this little bit of validation. So we're just going to check if player is on the floor when they launch the grappling hook. So let's put it all together. So when I click, my player flies up and he's launched and he gets that little bit of a boost as well at the very end of the grappling hook. Now you see that my green image point is still there. So all I need to do is go back to my layout, click on both these connection points here, and just make sure that initially visible is off for both of them. So actually I need to place a connection point two in order to do that. So initially visible off as well. So now they don't appear. Now I said that some users might not want to use a block, you might want to be able to connect to anything. In order to do that, what we're going to do is just take our block, edit animations, we're going to take a blank one and fill it in. So now these are all blank. And then we just take one that we want, and we can just place it round, slightly bigger around the edge of each block like so. And now I should be able to grapple to any object in the world like so and it still interacts with our solids and you're able to use that to get up hopefully you've enjoyed this video today it's a really really nice way that you can add a grappling hook into your 2d games let me know what other mechanics from other games you'd like to see in construct and i'll see you in the next video